friends this session is dedicated to the classification of cervical spine fractures this is important because be it in theory or in practicals a lot of times the examiners generally put a question to you asking what are the classification of cervical spine fractures that you know about so first we have to understand what exactly is a subaxial motion segment so in subaxial cervical spine the motion segment is made of the adjacent vertebrae the disc that is there in between the posterior arch ligaments and the facet joints so this in together constitute the motion segment the different classification systems that are used are holdsworth classification allen ferguson's classification system harris's classification white and punjabi's criteria for so instability the cervical spine injury severity score the subaxial injury classification and severity scale and the ao classification let's go through all these classification systems one by one let's go through this classification systems one by one holdsworth classification so he gave the two column concept to define cervical spine instability or stability they emphasized on the significance of the segmental ligaments and the facetal anatomy in determining whether the segment is stable or not stable so according to them the two column concept had the anterior column and the posterior column the anterior column comprised of the anterior longitudinal ligament the anterior part of the annulus the vertebral bodies the transverse processes the posterior annulus right here and the posterior longitudinal ligament so this is the anterior column for as per according to them the posterior column consists of ligamentum flavum right here the facet capsules the pedicles the lamina and the spinous process so all these structures form the posterior column so the five types of trauma or the five patterns of injury defined by them were flexion flexion and rotation extension compression and shear type now the merits were that they considered the posterior ligament structure in the integrity to define the segmental instability or stability and also the usage of the segmental ligaments that is a posterior ligamentous complex and also they try to establish the significance of facetal anatomy the limitations of this classification system were that it was not widely put into clinical practice hence validation has not been determined or established they never considered the neuro neurological status of the patient they never considered the neurological status of the patient they never considered the pre existing conditions like ankylosed spine or rheumatoid conditions or the facetal fracture dislocations are not included and also vascular injuries are not included in the classification hence allen's ferguson's in the year 1982 tried to devise their own classification system which is primarily based on the injury vector and the posture of cervical spine at the time of accident the translation of kinetic energy into fractures and dislocation is basically determined by these two that is the direction of the vector of force and the posture of cervical spine at the time of the accident so they based on the mechanism of injury they gave the fractures and dislocation which will give specific anatomical derangements which can be either a compression flexion vertical compression distractive flexion compression extension distractive extension and lateral flexion so in total six types were given by them so when we talk about each and independent type over here it is subdivided into different types or different ways or how it, it actually progresses if there is less of vector involved or the force of less the patients may get away with compression flexion one if ever it is in, on the higher side it may be stage 3 or it may go to stage 5 so these stages are basically the evolution of fracture pattern as the force 
increases. So in the first stage, there is just, there is blunting of the anterior superior vertebral margin without any deficit or without any posterior arch ligamentous damage. In stage 2, there is a vertebral beak, they may be seen or there may be loss of the vertebral height as we see over here. If we compare this body from a normal body, the height would be definitely decreased. In stage 3, we get a vertebral body beak, but there is no translation of the vertebral bodies. Now my friends, you have to understand, this is a beak which is present in stage 3. However, the beak body, the beak is not separate, it is just started forming, it is in stage 2. This is where the MCQs gets confusing. Stage 4, there is a translation of less than 3 millimeters of the fractured bodies as we see over here. And there is a more than 3 mm translation of the vertebral bodies, posterior aspect of the anterior ligaments and the posterior arch ligaments are disrupted along with this. As we see over here, the displacement is more than 3 millimeters with disruption of the anterior and posterior ligaments. The vertical compression has got three stages in total. The first stage is the cupping deformity of either the superior or the inferior end plate without any evidence of ligamentum failure. As we see over here, this is an example wherein the, we see the cupping of both the end plates which is actually the stage 2 of vertical compression injuries. If ever there is cupping of only one end plate, that becomes stage 1. When the force increase and the, there is excessive fragmentation and bursting of vertebral body, which may or may not be with the bulging of the posterior part of the vertebral body in the canal, the ligamentous structure may or may not be disrupted. So primarily the vertebral body is going to be disrupted as we see over into multiple fragments and the posterior part of the vertebral body may or may not extend into canal. Distractive flexion has got four stages as per when the force increases. If the force is less or when we talk about stage one, there is a facetal subluxation and flexion with divergence of the spinous process. So as we see here, this movement is of flexion. Along with this, there is divergence of the spinous process. The space over here is increased. When the forces progress, there is a unifacetal facetal dislocation with varying degrees of posterior ligamentous failure with or without rotational listhesis. So as they define over here, there is a facetal dislocation that is happening. However, the, what they say is there is a unilateral facetal dislocation. When the force increase, the unilateral facetal dislocation may become a bilateral facetal dislocation with listhesis up to 50 degrees. And in stage 4, there is a floating vertebral body with extreme translation of vertebral body with the other bilateral locked facets with significant failure of the posterior arch ligaments. So as we see over here, this vertebral body has toppled. There is a bilateral facetal dislocation with possibly some locking of facets happening here. When we talk about compression extension, there are five different stages. Stage 1 consists of three types, which may be 1A, 1B or 1C, depending on what exactly is fractured. So a unilateral fracture of the articular process, or it may be combined with a unilateral pedicle, or a laminar fracture, or a combined pedicle and articular process fracture will determine whether it is 1A, B or C. If ever it's a combined fracture, it becomes 1C. If ever the fracture is not involving a combination, it may be either 1A or 1B.
when we talk about stage 2, there is a bilaminar fracture of the posterior arch that could be at multiple levels. Over here is the lamina. As we see over here, the lamina is fractured over here as well as over here. So the levels are not important. If there is only lamina fracture, which is bilateral, it becomes stage 2. Along with this, when there is a bilateral vertebral arch fracture with fracture of articular processes, that is the pedicle, with or without some displacement, that becomes stage 3. So when the forces progress, there is a fracture in the vertebral arch along with pedicle fractures, this becomes stage 3. When there is a partial displacement of the vertebral body anteriorly along with this pedicle fracture or the vertebral arch fracture, this becomes stage 4. As we see over here, there is displacement that has happened of this vertebral body in regards to the body below and above. When this type of fracture involves two motion segments with bilateral posterior vertebral arch fractures and a full anterior displacement of the vertebral body, this becomes a stage 5. So, as we see over here, the body on this level and at this level are fractured, that is multi-level involvement. Along with this, there is an involvement of fractures in the posterior vertebral arch and there is a displacement of this vertebral body with respect to the lower one and both the bodies are fractured. So this becomes stage 5. Distractive